guys, welcome back. This is the fourth video now in the Forex winning machine learning strategy. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, let's see, we did... Okay, so this is where we left off. We just finished the Heikinashi candles in the last video. Now, I decided to restructure the videos from how I had originally planned um, and talked about in the last video. And that's just because um, these, these next two functions, the Fourier and the Sign Series fits, are really intensive. They're the most intensive ones. So I really want to take my time with it so that you guys can understand what I'm doing and so I'm not just rushing through it. Um, that being said, let's get right into it. So here's a good uh, visualization of what we're going to be doing. We have the stray data, um, these points, basically, and they're kind of oscillating about this, about a certain axis, which looks to be about 12 or so. And we're doing a Fourier expansion here, or yeah, it looks like a Fourier expansion uh, fit of that data. So we're, we're basically fitting a waveform to it, and that's what we're going to be doing for our stock data. And what parameters we're interested in are the, the coefficients of that series fit, and those are the indicators that we're going to use. Um, so before we get into that, you might notice that this data is stationary, and the data that we're going to be working with is not stationary because the, the market has trends. So we need to detrend the series. Now there's two popular methods of detrending. I mean, there's uh, there's linear detrending and then there's difference detrending. So linear detrending is when we subtract the the value of a of a fit line, a regression line that's been fit to our data. We subtract that line off of the data. So we're trying to remove the trend basically. Difference detrending is where we subtract the previous value of the time series from the current value. Now, between these two, I believe the difference detrending is the superior one, and I'll explain that really quick right here. So with linear detrending, this is basically what we have. We have this series, right, and it has a trend going upward. That's what we want to remove. So we fit a linear line to it, and then we get the equation of that line, and that's what we have here, y equals mx plus b. And then what we do is for each point, so here, 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 all the all the points, we get the corresponding value of the line. So that would be here, 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 and so forth. And then we would subtract those off. So in table form, that's what that looks like. So y prime here are the values of the line at these x points. And these are the these are actual data. So we subtract it off, we say y minus y prime, and this is what we get. And a plot of that detrended, linearly detrended data looks like this. So just to recap, this data, after linearly detrending, looks like this. Okay, so that's, that's all right. That looks pretty good, and that's just because we only have one trend here. But if we had multiple trends, like an upward spot and a downward spot, this isn't going to work so well. So there, okay, well the steps are fit the linear curve, get the value of the curve at each point, and then subtract those values off. Difference detrending is where we just subtract the previous value from the current value. So we can't, we don't have a previous value on the first one. So we just start at this one, subtract off 2, and we get 1.2. 6.1 minus 3.2 is 2.9. 1.5 minus 6.1 is negative 4.6. So you get that. And so a plot of this difference detrended data looks like this. So the steps for difference detrending are just to subtract yesterday's value from today's value. So before moving on, let's uh, hop over and write that function for the detrender. So we're going to call this detrender and I'm just going to go ahead and write out the function format that we've been doing, uh, that we started doing with Heikinashi. Okay, so what I did here is we have the input as prices, and that's the data frame of the open, high, low, close currency data. 
and then we have the method, and that's what I just covered: linear or difference. So that's an odd, that's a parameter or a or, or argument, <laughs> rather. And then we're going to return the detrended price series. And this is a very similar format to what I did in the last video with Heikinashi, and you should get into the habit of doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So let's make an if statement. So if the method is difference, what are we going to do? Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to we're going to name it detrended, and we can do this in one line of code. So what we're going to say is we're going to say prices dot close because we're going to be doing all this for the closing prices, and then we say one through the end. So since Python is a zero index based language, it starts at zero. So one. 1 through all, which is this, is going to be leaving off the very first value, right? So, th so if we imagine that 1 is now, then 0 is yesterday. So how do we subtract off 0? Prices.close everything through negative 1. So everything starting at 0 through the last one. And then the little trick that we're going to do here is that we want these are we want one start we want this side to represent the hours that we're the actual hour the time and place that we're at so both of these have indexes to them but we need to decide which one is going to determine the index of this because they're both going to have um, shifted indexes from each other so what we're going to do is put dot values off the side of this one to get rid of this one's index that way we only have an index from here so this one's index governs this okay so that is all we had to do for the difference method so we're gonna say else if method is equal to linear now this is the difficult one so first off let's create some dummy x data so we're going to use mp arrange for that uh, or numpy numpy and what we're going to do is we're going to just start at zero and we're going to go through the length of prices. If you guys don't know what this arrange does, go look it up. It's very simple. It just creates sequential array of data. So a 1D array. Okay, next we're going to say y is equal to prices dot close dot values. Okay, so now we don't have an index on this and we're we're we have a corresponding x points for all of these y points. Next, what we're going to do is make sure that you have the scikit-learn uh, linear regression model imported up here. We did that in the last video, so if you are paying attention to the last video, then you're all good. You're all Gucci. But um, so now we're going to create the model. So we say model is equal to linear regression. Okay, and so we initialize that class, and then we're going to fit the model. So model dot fit x y. So we're this is us fitting and getting the making the linear regression line that I showed you in the PowerPoint. Next, we're going to do um, we're going to say trend. So these are these are going to be like our y prime that I said. So we're going to say model dot predict. So this is what happens when we do model dot predict and we pass it x values. What it's going to do is it's going to throw back the y values at that point, at those points. And really quick before we do this, I forgot that um, Scikit-Learn doesn't like um, things in this format that we're giving it. So we're just going to go ahead and, and put res dot reshape here and then uh, negative 1, 1. Okay. So I don't know exactly why, it's just one of those things. So you do that it'll get it in the format that it wants and let's do this over here as well all right now that, that is done with what we're going to do is we're going to reshape this um, back into a shape that we like because it's it's going to output it um, as a 2d array i believe but we want it to be 1d array so what we're going to do is we're going to say trend is equal to trend dot reshape and here inside here we're just going to put the shape that we want so we want it to be 1d with the dimension 
or the row dimension to be, or the length dimension, so so called, or so <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying here. So what we'll do is length of prices, all right, and then comma. So this is going to make a 1D array uh, out of our trend data, and then we're going to say detrended is equal to is equal to our y values, right? Prices dot close is our y values, and remember we have an index on this, so all these are going to be indexed, which is what we want. Trend minus the trend, so that, so we detrended it that way, okay? And then let's just go ahead and make an error statement here. Okay, so now we just have our little error statement there, and then last but not least, we're going to return the detrended data. Alrighty, so if this is all set up right, which I believe it is, we can hop back over to our tester and get in here and we'll just say detrended huh, trended detrended is equal to detrend our prices and then the method. We actually don't need to pass the method in or actually, you know what, I'll show you the linear method first um, just so I can demonstrate why um, by the way, this this is data frame on this side of the things, not prices so I'm going to demonstrate to you why I like one over the other right now so I'm going to go ahead and plot this Okay, so here is our plot. So here is our, our candles, our open, high, low, close candles. And this is our linearly detrended data. So as you can see here, this is kind of weak because this, we, had, we didn't lose the trend, did we? Because this follows this almost identically. I mean, just look here where they're both overlaid on each other. They almost look identical. That is why I don't like the linear detrending method. Um, at least over the whole data range. Now the reason that this happens is that because we're we're fitting a linear line over the whole data series. So if we were to break it into smaller pieces, say from here to here and fit a line there and detrend it, then it would work good. But why go through that effort when if I come over here and put the difference method, see what that gives us. And there it is, beautiful. So the difference method gives us completely detrended. So see how it oscillates about zero? That's what we want. We want a stationary time series whereby now we can fit a Fourier or a sine expansion curve to this data. And it will allow us a higher degree of prediction power. I love what we're doing here in these next couple of videos because it turns out at the end that this indicator that we're working on now has the highest prediction power of any of the other ones. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like or a comment or whatever, yada, 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 you heard it a million times. I'll see you guys in the next video.